The price per share of stock X increased by 10% over the same time period that the price per share of stock Y decreased by 10%. So hold on, let's just look at that for a second. If we have 10%, if we want to increase by 10%, what we have to do is change this to a decimal, 0.1, then add 1, so we get 1.1. Now what we've created is called a multiplier. And so if we multiply x by 1.1, that represents a 10% increase in x. To decrease y by 10%, similar process, so decrease, so that's negative 10%, negative 0.1, add 1 and we get 0.9, and this is the multiplier for a 10% decrease. 0.9y is a 10% decrease in y. So the question asks, the reduced price per share of stock y, which is this, is what percent of the original price of stock x? So if we were going to figure that out, that would be 0.9y divided by x times 100%. And so really, the only thing that we don't know is this ratio y over x. If we could figure out y over x, we could answer the question. So statement number one tells us the increased price per share of stock Y was equal to the original price per share of stock X. So 1.1 stock X equals Y. Well, right there, we divide both sides by X. What we get is 1.1 equals Y over X. Well, we have the ratio of Y over X, so now we can solve. So this statement by itself is sufficient. Statement number two tells us the increase in price per share of stock X was 10 11 the decrease in price per share of stock Y. So the increase in price was 10%. So 10% of X equals 10 11 and of course the decrease was also 10% equals 10 11 times 0.1 times y. And so now we'd have to do a little more reconjiguring, but of course from this we would also be able to isolate y over x, and then that would give us the information necessary to solve the question. So this statement also by itself is sufficient. If all this information about percent and percent changes are, are making your head spin, then I highly recommend take a look at magoosh.com. Magoosh prepares people to take the GMAT, and we have a few hundred videos teaching you the math on the GMAT, also a few hundred on the verbal side, as well as practice questions followed by video explanations, and it will teach you everything you need to know about percents to master them for the GMAT. So here we have two sufficient statements. That would be an answer choice of D.